We went into the weekend knowing the clock would not be stopped on Idaho's abortion laws. Late Friday, Idaho's Supreme Court decided to not add or continue the stay on the state abortion bans about to go into effect, meaning the six-week ban set to start this Friday. Well, that's going to do just that. It's going to start this Friday. And the near-total ban triggered by the overturning of Roe v. Wade, that will go into effect nearly a week later on August 25th. Both of these laws are still facing legal review. There are still lawsuits being considered by the state Supreme Court, and those are set to be heard in September. This ruling just means well, they can be enforced while they work their way through the courts. Near total means there are exceptions for cases of rape and incest reported to law enforcement and if the pregnancy threatens the life of the mother. The rape or incest exceptions require a police report. And the life of the mother, well, that is up to the doctor. Federal law mandates hospitals using Medicare funds cannot refuse emergency care to patients, which may include an abortion when a mother's health is at risk. The question is how this decision would be made by a doctor. Idaho physicians we've spoken with say they worry about making the correct decision when it comes to doing an abortion or not. Could their determination be deemed illegal by a court? It's a question we asked the sponsor of Idaho's trigger law, Representative Megan Blanksma, two weeks ago. It, it talks about the judgment of the doctor. Now, it, it, I think that's what we all do when we rely on medical care. And, and this was a big discussion that we had during COVID too, right? Is, is we're relying on the judgment of your medical care provider. And so we, it's in the legislation. And I think that oftentimes when we write legislation where we try to anticipate every single possible reaction, that's when we get into trouble. Okay, so that would cover the medical emergency option, we're told. But will we get into trouble if you ask others? There's a lot more areas. What if your situation isn't covered by the exceptions? Planned Parenthood is working to set up a clinic on the Oregon-Idaho border, but that's not up and running and likely won't be until months from now, which means there's likely going to be a lot of urgent questions beginning almost immediately. Here's Joe Paris. Abortion care in Idaho is set to significantly change. The first of two abortion bans go into effect this week. So, beginning Friday, Idahoans seeking an abortion will need to evaluate their options for care, likely outside the state. Our advice is, is to contact Planned Parenthood, contact us, call us, come in. Dr. Aaron Barry is the medical director for Planned Parenthood in our region. Despite changing laws, Barry says Planned Parenthood still offers some care options in Idaho. We are still seeing patients for pregnancy evaluation visits, so we can help determine how far along you are, you know, and you know, get any required laboratory testing or medical history. There are specific scenarios where Idaho providers can do an abortion, but there are cases that won't qualify for medical or legal exceptions to the law. In cases that are not covered under the exception, Dr. Barry says that staff in Idaho can help navigate the potentially complicated situation of getting an abortion outside of Idaho. And then we can help um, either take care of you in Idaho for the short period of time that we can, um, or we can help warm handoff and, and get you to the services that you need to get in, in out-of-state locations. So we are here um, standing by to, to be there for our patients. So what could travel look like for Idahoans who need an abortion outside the state? Planned Parenthood in Walla Walla and Pullman, Washington are the closest providers outside of Idaho. They offer abortion pills, which are effective up to 11 weeks. The nearest in-clinic abortion care is in Kennewick, Washington, a 230-mile drive from the Boise area or about five hours away. Advocates like Planned Parenthood have spoken out for weeks, trying to answer community questions on abortion care. And while there isn't one answer to all the questions in specifics, Barry says there is a common answer for getting help. Call us. You know, our, we have a patient access center, which is um, multiple people staff staffing this call center to to yield questions and help navigate people. We also, as a part of the call center, have specific patient navigators for patients who are seeking abortion care um, to help bring them, you know, get them appointments, um, help determine, you know, what location is best for them across the country where they can get the care that they need. Um, so, a phone call is really the best at this time. Medical care can be very costly, creating another barrier for some Idahoans that may seek abortion care. Dr. Barry says that Planned Parenthood has resources for those in need. We have um, funds from several different locations that we're helping connect patients to funding sources so that they can get the resources that they need in order to seek the, the health care that they deserve. 
Planned Parenthood says they also do have resources and care for Idaho women who do get an abortion out of state. We are also here for patients who, if they travel out of state for abortion and have post-abortion care follow-up questions or concerns or needs, we are here, we are open for you. We are also here for miscarriage management. So Dr. Barry and I spoke this afternoon and I asked her about the phone service and calling in and she said understandably expect some delays not only in their phone service but maybe in some of the communication. As we all understand a lot of this is changing very quickly again on Friday is when the fetal heartbeat bill that six week ban goes into effect. So if you do find yourself in the coming weeks or months in a situation where you are reaching out to Planned Parenthood, Brian uh, really some of the advice other than calling is there is going to be a situation where they need patients. There is a lot a lot of moving parts right now and Planned Parenthood says that they are working to get the resources and really the financial resources and everything set up so they can help Idahoans maybe travel to Washington, maybe get the care they need. Maybe they're in a situation where they only need to go to Bend, Oregon, but every situation is different and the Planned Parenthood and Dr. Barry says that they want to talk people through this. They know it can be very scary and it can be very new and frankly, it's very new to them as well. Well, and this isn't the only option. Of course, there's also the option of adoption that's been brought up several times about this, but there are a lot of people, women out there that cannot carry a baby to term, but whether it's because of financial reasons, medical reasons, psychological reasons, there's a lot of reasons that need to be considered with these bills. But as you mentioned, by Friday, these will become a major reality for a lot of Idahoans. And I think it's also important that we mention Friday is not necessarily the end all be all. When that law does start, it starts. However, the Idaho Supreme Court is still taking up this topic and they're going to take this up in September. What happens in September, we don't know. It's possible that they do nothing. It's possible they bar block part of the law. It's possible they could overturn the whole law. The likelihood of all of that, though, depends on specific arguments and really how the court process plays out. Long story short, though, what I'm trying to summarize here is this story's not over. Yep. We have one law that starts this week, one that starts next week, and then in September, the Supreme Court will hear arguments from Planned Parenthood and the state of Idaho on if it's constitutional. And that could open up a whole other can of worms as well. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you very much, Joe.